tutorial video. Last time we stopped here. We learned how to build a robot using Rero. We learned how to set the servo limits. We learned how to program the robot using the teach mode and also run the programs through the play mode. So we're gonna start from here today. So what we're gonna mainly do is to learn how to program the robot using the programming software, the Rero Animator. The Rero Animator which is a very easy to use software that is user friendly to beginners and even for the advanced users. <coughs> so before we go into programming, we're going to build an extension or an upgrade for the robot so that once we mount it onto the robot, we can use it to better understand how to program the Rero robot. So we'll put this aside first. Now these are all the parts we will need. We only need a few parts. We need two cube servos, three interconnects, two rotatable connects, one claw and two long U joints. Okay. So first we take one cube servo and then slot in a rotatable connect to the opposite side of the output connect, which is here. We slide it in. And then we take an interconnect and then slide slide it in in between the two around here. Actually you can slide in anywhere as long as it's in this shape where they're aligned like this. <coughs> then you can slot this in into the long U-joint. Now make sure that you use the long U-joint because there are two U-joints. One is shorter than normal U-joint and the other is the long one. As you can see the length comparison. Okay, we're gonna use the long one. Okay, so slide in. Make sure the slots go into the upper connect and the rotatable connect, not the, not the interconnect. And also remember that you have to slide in by following the yellow arrow, like this. <coughs> okay, now we have this. Now just duplicate this, we need two sets of this. So your cube servo, rotatable connect on the opposite side, interconnect in between, and then slide in to the long U joint. <coughs> okay, now we have two sets. So, as you can see, there's also a slot here on the long U joint. So, you can slide in here, like so. So, now we have something like an arm. And finally, on the last, this long U joint, slot in an interconnect and then a claw. <coughs> so, like this, we've completed a very simple arm. So, you can also experiment yourself by using a long U joint because the long U joint is mainly used to, to build arms or limbs for the robots. Okay, once you're done, just a car robot. So slot in the interconnect through here on the front of the robot. Of course you can slot in anywhere, but I just put it here so that you can see it clearly. So once you're done, remember that you have to connect the wires yourself. Okay, now I've connected all the wires, so as you can see the servos for the arm is now connected to the controller. So remember that you need to connect all the wires to the controller no matter if you use daisy chaining or you use the, ex the extension wires. As long as the servos are connected to the controller, they will all work. So now we're going to set the limits for the robot. So we'll go to servo limit and for this motor, first one, the limit will be from here to here. So as you can see there's a 180 degree space for it to move, say, and for the bottom one it will be the same. 180 degrees like so. Okay. So I've set the limit for the arm. So if you if you dismantle your robot your car robot, remember that these two servos are for steering and then these two motors are for you need to set the motor wheel. So if you deleted the previous limits, remember to set it back before we go into programming. Okay, now that we know how to use the Rero Animator, we will now program the robot with an objective. So we need to let the robot perform a task so that we can test our how good we are at using the Rero. So here's what we're going to do. We want the robot to move forward and then act as if it wants to dig something and then move back. Okay, so now let's see how we're going to program this. Okay, now we're going to download the Rero animator. So first go to your address bar, 
from your browser and then type www.reroll.com.my okay, press enter and then you access the home page for Rero. And then go to support then download after that scroll down until you see software and then the first one would be the Rero animator click it to download and once it's done downloading, open the installer. Run the installer. Then just click next. Because the installer will automate all the installation, so you don't have to. There's no fuss on installing. It's a very easy process. Once you're done, click finish, then you launch the real animator. A shortcut will also be placed at the desktop so you can access it easily. Okay, now that you've downloaded the real animator, we're gonna start programming a robot. So the first thing you have to do is you need to connect the robot to the controller. It, your controller to the computer. So this is the USB cable that comes with the set. So plug the USB port to your computer. And then the other head goes here. So remember to turn on your your controller first. You can see the menu. But once you plug in, you see that the screen will change to this. This will show that the controller is connected to your computer. And then you can also see that there's an indicator with a tick. This means that the Rero is is connected to your computer. So if I unplug it, you see that it will change to a cross. If I plug in again, it will change back to a tick. Okay, now we're going to start to use the Rero animator. The first thing you see is that there's a row of selections and functions on the top. Those are options you can use to help you on your programming. So the first option is New Motion. Click it. Then you see that a row of a column of servos will be shown. There's 11 to 16. Those are the servos that you're using. Then there's Open and Save Motion. So that's literally open a file or save your program so you can open the previous program that's the indicator to indicate if your controller is connected then here is where you can change the name of your robot you can change it to car test or literally you can change it to anything you want i'll save it there then the sixth option is upload to robot so once you're done with your program, you can click upload to, upload to robot and then you'll be able to upload the program into your robot to run later on. So these are options that I will skip for now because they're more advanced and we won't be using them yet. And then these magnifying glasses is where you can change the size. So you can zoom in or zoom out, then go back to the default size. So what I, what I like to do is zoom in so that it will only show the rows you'll be using. And then that's about it. So. You need to get familiar with all these options and then we'll start programming. Now on to the programming. So the first thing you see there are six bars here. So this is what, what I would call servo bar. So what you always do is you can name the bar. So you click the blue part and then go to servo name, you can name the part. So I use servo 11 and 12 for the arm, so I'll name them arm 1 and arm 2 so that maybe later it will be easier for me to distinguish which servo I'm controlling. So now double click here and you add what we would call an action. So the action is a command to that particular motor. Then you can see there's a, something like a pie here. So you click on the red, the red indicator. So you see if you drag it, you see your servo start to move and it will follow where you point it. So you can see there's a gray part and there's a blue part. The gray part is actually the limit. So you can, as you can see, if I drag it down, it won't go any further. It follows the limit that you set on your robot. So setting a limit is important so it will make program easier. You can have more than one action <coughs> going at the same time. So you can see a parallel. I'll show what it means. So you control it the same way and you can always type in the angle so if you want a more precise movement you can type it in just like this now we're going to try to write an actual program so we'll make what we would call an a sequence of actions 
so that your robot will perform that sequence. So we will concentrate on one server first. So right click on the second one and then delete the action. We will focus on one server first so it will be easier. So immediately after the first action, double click. So you add what the second action to your program. So what this will do is the model will first turn to 180 degrees and then it will turn to 263 degrees. So as you can see, there's a timeline on top. So from 0 0.0 to 0 0.5 seconds, it will turn to 180 degrees. And then from 0 0.5 to 1 second here, it will turn to 263 degrees. So 180 degrees is what we call step 1, and then 263 is step 2. So then you can go to upload to robot to upload a program. So one thing you need to remember is you always have to save your program first before uploading. So you can save it anywhere you like. You can save it on a desktop, in your documents or anything. I'll name it test arm. Save. And then once it saves, it will allow you to choose which file you want to save it to. I'll choose file 1. Click OK. It has been successfully uploaded. So now all you have to do is go to menu on your controller, click play, file one, and then once you play, you see that the arm will move according to the sequence that you just commanded it, you just programmed. So remember to disconnect first before you can access the menu. So that's a two part sequence we just made. So you can add as many actions as you want. So here's the third one, then you can add one afterwards, right behind, and this is the fourth, fifth, and so on. You can add as many as you like. I'll delete this, these for now, because since we won't be using them. So what we're going to try now is to make a simultaneous movement. So we control both motor, both servos at once. So if I write like this, both servos will move at the same time. So here I'll add an action. Here I'll make it blank. So during this duration, only arm one, the servo one will move. So, and then here I'll make an action and then leave the top one blank. So here only the second servo will move. And then finally I'll add an action where both servos will operate at the same time. Okay. Like so. So this will be a four part program. So once when you upload it, remember that you have to always save it before you upload it. This is to make sure that it won't lose your program. And then I'll click the file to then OK. So after that, just remember to unplug your controller and then go to play and then run your program. As you can see at first, both motors will move straight and then the top one will move, the second move, and then both and then both of them will move together. Okay, so now I've named all the servos. So there are two for the arm, two for steering, and two for the wheels. So we won't be using the steering because we only be you letting robot move forwards and backwards. Remember that the naming your maybe it could be that your servos are different from mine because your complete the arrangement is different from mine, so bear in mind that you don't have to follow what I name them and for the order. But so these two are for my arm, these two, and then these two are for wheels. Then you can see the for the wheels is different. So this is clockwise, this is anti-clockwise, but I'll go in to it. So first one I'll make the arms stand upright. And then I'll let the robot move forward. So let's say I let go test run. You see that the motor will start moving. Stop. So this is how you test the servo that's set to to function as a wheel. Let's run. So as you can see, for this motor, clockwise is moving means moving forward. But for the other motor, it also runs on clockwise. But as you can see, it will. Be This one will be moving backwards. So you need to remember that although clockwise is forward for one servo, it could be it could be different for the other one. So for the second one, I'll change counterclockwise. 
meaning you're turning in the opposite direction. Like this. Also, you can control the speed. So I'll make it go faster. I'll make it go faster for both. So you turn. So you move forward for 0.5 seconds. Let's try it out. So I'll say it first. Test. Then upload to file one. Okay. So we'll see how it works first. So by right, it will the motor will the arm will turn upwards. We move forward. Okay. So we we'll continue from here. <coughs> so now you move forward. The arm after you move forward, the arm will start to move. So the first part would be letting this joint move downwards. So downwards. After that, I want this joint to turn this way. So I leave this blank and here moving to dig to dig the floor. Okay. This after that this one will move. Up, back up. So as you can see, the both the motors are act, taking turn moving rather than moving together at the same time. So if you want them to move one by one, you need to do it like this. Okay. So after that, when it's done, this this motors turn to move back upwards. So 180 degrees, and then I want the robot to move backwards back to its original position. So, so like set it to zero so that the motor won't move during this duration. Zero, 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 zero. So after the arm has stopped moving, it will finally move backwards. So Originally, for this motor moving clockwise, me moving forward. So at the end, I'll let it move counterclockwise so it move backwards. And then for the second motor, since moving counterclockwise means moving forward, at the end, I will let it move clockwise so that it will move backwards back. Okay, so let's save it again. <coughs> and then upload it. It. So by right, you guys should complete. Okay. Let's see the test run. Okay, let's see it again. Okay. So it works as what we expected it to. So this one last function I'll show you. So I connected it. So. Whenever you want to upload program, you see that there's a loop. You can tick it here. If you tick it and then download, and see something will happen to the program. Now watch closely. So you can see that I don't have to play the program again when it ends because looping means to allow the program to repeat once it's finished. So after the last sequence, it will move to the first sequence again, and that will loop, so it will repeat forever until you turn it off. Okay, so, okay, so the loop may come useful sometimes if you want to make a repeatable program. So you can make, so make sure that you take it, or make sure that it's not ticked based on the program that you want to write. Okay, so here's a task for you to try. The robot will move one round in a square shape, almost a square shape, and then you'll be able to come back to this spot where it started.